Democrats are snubbing President Obama. So will he go it alone in Syria? I, I of the country, no. no. So the no's have it. The no's have it. If uh, the United States decides to lead military action uh, in uh, reprisal or to punish the use of chemical weapons last week, uh, Britain will not be part of that. I strongly believe in the need for a tough response to the use of chemical weapons. It is clear to me that the British Parliament, reflecting the views of the British people, does not want to see British military action. I get that, and the government will act accordingly. We've been here in 2003, basically misled. We were told there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, and there weren't. And the UK public and the US public are very nervous about jumping into decisions that require military force. This is a complete humiliation for the Obama administration. Here's Obama trying to gather an ally or two for a pinprick, and he gets nothing. The president has laid down America's credibility by issuing a red line. The president of the United States has said for a year Bashar Assad has to go. Now we're in a position to actually make him go, and we've decided, no, we're not going to do that. That's because there's no strategy. They have no idea what they're doing. Former Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld joins us. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Tell me, sir, how significant is it that the British have voted not to essentially go along with us should we do a military strike, at least not for the moment? Well, it is, as has been said, humiliating. Uh, it, 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 it is a direct result of the confused and, and uh, lead-from-behind uh, posture that our country has taken under the Obama administration. The fact that there has not been a mission de defined leaves people with confusion and, and unwillingness to be supportive. Unless we stay, it's true just, not just overseas, but it's true in our country. I mean, if you can't even organize a three-car convoy, a motorcade, then you've got a real problem, and, and you have to stop and say, is what we're doing really making sense? What do you envision is the goal of a, a missile strike now? What are the possible goals, and, and what can we possibly seek to achieve, you know, or reasonably achieve? Well, I don't have any idea what they have, what they have in mind. Uh, you know, one looking at it uh, has to say there's a lot we don't know. We don't know precisely yet uh, if chemical weapons were used, although it appears likely. We don't know who used them. The inspectors have not come out. I think it's important uh, for the credibility of the government to, to get to ground truth. Uh, we don't know what the White House and the president believe to be our strategic interest. What is, what is the national interest for the United States? You can't put a coalition together until you define the mission. When you define the mission and say, here's what we're going to do and here's why we're going to do it, then countries come in line. Countries aren't going to come in. I mean, in the Bush administration, they had dozens of countries supporting the activity in Afghanistan, in Iraq, the uh, pro proliferation, counter proliferation initiative, the global war on terror. And, and the reason they did was because there was clarity, and there's a lack of clarity here. Uh, that the idea of firing a shot across the bow or a pinprick action to so called punish them, I think, is, is probably a mistake. I, I think unless you've decided. You have a, a clear purpose that is for, in the interest of our country. It, it's best not to do that because the, the uh, United States will look ineffective and weak. Compare and contrast for me the situation between Iraq, where there was suspicion that there were weapons of mass destruction, and it turned out not. Here, there seems to be relatively no suspicion of weapons of mass destruction, chemical weapons, yet there is not an appetite to do it. What's, what's the difference between the two, and how are they the same? Well, in the case of Iraq, obviously, they had, they had used chemical weapons against their neighbors. They had used chemical, Saddam Hussein had used chemical weapons against his own people. He was known to have had stockpiles, and he was refusing to allow the U.N. to go in and validate whether or not they remained and still existed. In this instance, uh, we don't know who, we know that they had chemical weapons, but we don't know yet uh, who used them if, and, and, and for what purpose. And uh, that, that is, I think, uh, a situation. I think also the fact that it turned out there were not large stockpiles in Iraq has led to a great deal of understandable caution.
on the part of the United States and other countries. In this instance, the president has said, at least up to this date, that regime change is not a goal of this mission should he decide to uh, send missiles or take military action against Syria. Your thought on that, on no regime change as not being a goal, is, does that in some way have any factor into any of your thoughts on this? Well, it has to affect your, your, your thinking. Uh, if you think of what's really important in the Middle East to the United States, uh, first one would have to say is Egypt. And we've, we've played that hand very badly. Uh, we've ended up uh, leaving the Egyptian people with the impression we support the Muslim Brotherhood, and the Egyptian people are opposing the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, and, and clearly the Muslim Brotherhood is, is not a, a, a partner for us of any appropriateness. In, in the case, the second most important thing, or maybe equally, would be the Iranian nuclear program and their relationship with Syria and their support of terrorist organizations. To the extent the president does something and it leaves Bashar Assad standing, uh, who has, A, uh, presumably used chemical weapons, B, been complicit in terrorist acts, in supporting various terrorist organizations in, in close uh, complicity with Iran, it's going to tell Iran that the United States of America is is willing to draw a red line, and it really doesn't mean anything. And the question in my mind is, we if we look weak and, and persuade Iran that they can charge ahead with their nuclear program, we will have done something most unfortunate. And I can't at the moment not knowing there's so much we don't know about what's taking place in, in Syria, uh, I, I can't at the moment tell what's going to make us look weaker, doing nothing, having drawn a, a red line, or going in and doing a shot across the bow on a pinprick. What, what he's managed to do is to get China active in the Middle East, uh, supporting Assad, and reactivate uh, Putin and Russia. Uh, supporting Assad, basically in support of the use of chemical weapons. It, is, it, is it at all possible, or is there any you know, reference in history, or even if you think it's possible, can you have a military strike into a civil war, not have a regime, ch regime change, get out and stay out, or once you put your foot into this, are you now, you know, do you own it? Are you part of this, and are we then more involved than we ever wanted to or dreamed to be? Well, I, I think it would be most unfortunate if the United States ended up on the ground in that situation uh, over a sustained period of time. What, it, it is a tragic, to be sure, that the, uh, some 100,000 Syrians have been killed. That's a terrible tragedy. On the other hand, the, the strategic interest for the United States is, as I say, more properly should be focused on Iran, Egypt, and not on Syria. And, uh, and and I think that's just the reality. Have we sort of, as the president sort of boxed himself in by, you know, saying that, you know, the, this red line, and now that he's drawn the red line, and he's been talking about uh, Assad was going to leave. He's been saying that for two and a half years. He hasn't left. Now there might be missile strikes, and, he's, and Assad is not the target, so he's going to be emboldened afterwards, I assume. Yet, on the other hand, he can't get Britain to back him, can't get the U.N. to give an authorization, or at least not yet anything from Congress. So it really does look, it's like President Obama all alone. So, is, I mean, is he boxed in, or what's his exit strategy? Well, I, unfortunately, I don't think he's thought those things through. I haven't sensed any strategy uh, or any, any uh, roadmap uh, or idea as to what the next steps ought to be. He talks and he says things that box in the United States and drive us down a cul-de-sac. Uh, that, that doesn't mean that the only thing he can do now, it seems to me, is to, is to do something that would make us look still weaker. I mean, the, 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 this administration has, has said to the world that we are basically a country in decline. Uh, he manages the economy, uh, uh, modeling it after Europe, which is a failed model. He, he has made pronouncements in the world that have proven in relatively short order not to be the case. And I think that what he needs to do is to take a deep breath, get down to ground truth, and, and, and say to himself that the United States does have a role to play in the world, but it has to be played 
in a, in a steady, solid way. And in fact, the, the policies that we've seen have been harmful to the United States and the perception of the United States rather than helpful. Mr. Secretary, thank you very much, sir, for joining us. You bet. And at this hour, it has been reported the president has not yet made a decision. He has no.